In this video, we're going to do the first two problems from exponential functions practice so that y'all can see more ways we can work with exponential functions and use them to evaluate problems and solve problems. So the first question says, a chain letter was sent to 10 people with each person being told to forward the letter to two other people within 24 hours. If we assume that everyone did as they were told and no two people sent the letters to the same person, we can model the number of letters being sent on day t with the equation L equals 10 times two to the t. So 10 is the initial value and then it's doubling. It's being sent to two people each day. So that's why we're multiplying it times two raised to the number of days because every day it's going to double. So I'm gonna set up a chart with my days and then my number of letters. And beside letters, I'm gonna type in my formula. So that's 10 times two raised to the, and since T represents the time, I'm going to cell reference my days cell. And since this question has three parts, I'm gonna go ahead and drag that equation over three spots so I can work part A in the first column, part B in the second column, and then part C in the third column and not lose any of my answers or any of my work while I'm working. So part A says, how many letters will be sent on day seven? Well, this one's actually pretty easy. We can just put seven in for days since our input is being measured in days. And that tells us that on day seven, there will be 1,280 letters sent out. Part B says, on what day will 2,560 new copies be sent out? Well, it's asking for the days and giving us the number of letters. I just realized I misspelled letters. There we go. All right, so again, it's asking for days, giving us letters. So this is a case where it's given us the output and it's asking us for the input. And I just, I can't type in 2560 in place of letters because that'll lose the equation and it won't do anything. So this is the case where we have to goal seek. Anytime we're given the output and we're trying to solve for the input, in this case, we're trying to solve for T. T tells us how many days we have to goal seek. So I'm gonna start my equation in that second column Go up to data, what if analysis, goal seek. And I want my equation to get up to 2,560 letters by changing the number of days. And it's going to guess and check a bunch of different number of days until it gets as close as possible to sending out 2,560 letters in one day. And we see that will happen on day eight. So part C says, on day 10, there were 10,240 letters set out. So day 10 we see that there were 10,240 letters sent out. How much longer until 2,480 letters are sent out in a day? Well, there's two ways we can do this. One way is we could actually drag this equation over one more spot and we could goal seek it to the number of letters that are being sent out. So if we goal seeked it to 2,480 by changing our number of days, we see that that happens on day 11 one day later. But you didn't actually need to do that because we said in this problem that the letters are doubling every day. And if you notice on day 10, it was 10,240. Well, doubled would have been 2,000 or 20,480. So we could have just looked at it and thought for a second and realized, hey, that's just doubling. That's gonna take one day later. But when we did the math, we verified that it did happen the very next day because the number of letters doubles each day. So number two, it says the amount of a certain non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug in the bloodstream is reduced by 18.5% per hour. The proper dose for this drug is 100 milligrams. All right, so our variables, we have hours, and then we have the amount of the drug. And in this case, we have to come up with our own equation. So we're reducing by percentage, that tells us it's exponential. And we're starting with 100. So it's going to be 100, our initial value, times then one, since it's reducing, we're gonna be minusing, subtracting 0.185, so 0.185, and then raised to our variable, which in this case is the number of hours that it's been. So again, we had to come up with this equation. It's exponential because we're changing by percentage each hour. So we take our initial value times, then one minus the percent written as a decimal because it's reducing, raised to our variable. So that's our equation. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag it over three spots because it looks like we have three parts to this problem. So part A says, what is the half-life of the drug in the bloodstream? Well, there's a couple different ways we can do half-life. In your PowerPoint from last week, 
there's actually a Half-Life formula that your book likes to use. And it's awesome. It works well. If you like it, please use it. But we can also figure out Half-Lives using Goal Seek and not have to create a new formula. And I actually prefer doing it using Goal Seek. I think it's a little bit easier. So Half-Life tells you how long does it take until you have half of your original amount. Well, we started with 100, so half of 100 would be 50. So we're trying to figure out how long does it take to get down to 50 milligrams. So what we can do is we can Goal Seek our equation to 50 by changing the number of hours, and this will solve for us how long it takes to get down to half of the original amount. So we see it takes 3.39 hours for half of the drug to go away, so the half-life is 3.39 hours. Part B says, determine how much of this drug remains in the bloodstream after six hours. Well, here we're given the number of hours as the input, so we can just type it in. So six hours later, there will be 29.31 milligrams left in the bloodstream. And then part C says, after what period of time will there be seven milligrams of the drug? So again, it's asking us for time, it's asking us for hours, and it's given us the drug. That means we need to goal seek our drug's value to seven by changing the hours, and that will tell us the number of hours that it will take. So I'm gonna goal seek my equation to seven by changing the number of hours. And we see that it's going to take 12.999, so basically 13 hours, to get down to 7 milligrams in the bloodstream.